Well, good morning. Now that we went out and actually did some real work and made a couple dollars, we are back in the shop to work on the truck some more. Uh, what we are going to do today is install the aux beam switch pod and a second backup camera. Uh, this truck has the factory backup camera in the tailgate that comes up on the big screen right here and you can see really well. The problem is you can't see underneath the car where that auto loader claw is going and grabbing the tires and you want to make sure you're missing the oil pan and all that stuff. So this shows you the back of the car really well but you can't see what you're doing underneath. So it is possible to move the camera in the tailgate down low underneath and it would give a great view and put it right up on my factory screen right here, which would be super ideal. But I don't want to lose the factory camera because that is really handy for backing up in parking lots or in and out of the shop and stuff like that. So the solution is kind of a compromise. It's add a whole second camera and screen because I don't know how to make it pop up on here with another camera. I'm sure there's a way. I don't know how to do it. Maybe we'll figure it out later. But it's kind of a compromise because I don't like stuff. I like just clean factory look. Like this right here bothers me. I don't like that thing at all. It's a, it's not a tuner. All it is is the gauges. So this truck uh, has all its own stuff. If it's getting too hot or whatever it's going to tell me. So I'm kind of thinking about pulling this out because all it is is gauge. It's not a tuner. See, I'll show you. If you go to tuning in here. It pops up and says, once this SKU does not support tuning. Call tech support, blah, 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 for upgrades. So, not a tuner, just a gauge reader, which is handy seeing as this truck tows heavy stuff a lot, so I can keep an eye on it, but really, it doesn't need it. So, that bothers me. So, what I'm thinking about doing is installing, I got a very small backup camera screen, which, again, is another compromise. It's a smaller view, but... Uh, takes up less space and I don't want some big old screen sitting right here or something like that I'm thinking of putting the backup camera screen right here So that when I'm in reverse and this one is active on the screen I can look right just in this direction and be able to see the overview of what I'm backing up to as well as see Underneath the car and what that wheel is just doing while looking just in one spot not going like What's that one doing? What's that one doing? You know all in one spot nice and simple and then to keep with that all in one spot thing, I'm thinking of the switch pod going right here. The switch pod is gonna run uh, auxiliary lights, light bar on the front, the backup lights, the underneath lights. So having kind of quick access to it is handy, not like reach around here to try to hit a switch or something. That is kind of the plan. So we're gonna get into it and see what we can come up with with hopefully not drilling any holes or anything in this new truck. All right, so here's what we got going on. Uh, on top of all this, you see I mounted these two wheel well toolboxes in this truck. So when the tailgate's shut, the tailgate has its own lock, so everything's locked up. But then I can open these. I have all my sockets, all my pliers and allens, screwdrivers. That one's got more tools over there. So that should be pretty handy without killing a bunch of bed space. I do need to put another cross bed box up there for my bigger stuff, but I gotta find one that'll fit because in that corner underneath that pile of straps is the hydraulic pump and hydraulic reservoir that runs the wheel lift which I have out and turned sideways because I'm gonna have to get in here to mount the camera. So I have to find a box, a small low profile one that goes in there and doesn't go across the whole bed because I don't have the whole bed. But anyway, here is what we're gonna be fitting in that cab. This is the aux beam switch pod. And what I like about it is this right here that fits in the palm of your hand is all that goes in the cab. And then this wire runs one wire right here, just one wiring harness runs through the cab into the engine bay where you mount the fuse block. And this is your fuses and your relays so that just small little wire can run big power off of this. I don't know the specs of what power this will actually run because I didn't even look it up. Um, it's more than enough to run all the lights and my phone's ringing that I need to run on this thing. I know that because I've been running on my tow truck for two years so it's adequate for that. Let me go see if that's a call that will bring me money. Okay nobody likes stuck somewhere cool or anything so back to work. 
And you see, I got the truck all the way in the shop. If you get just right and position the wheel lift just right and miss that with the door, it does actually fit in the shop. So, as I was saying, this is the switch pod that is in the truck. This is the wire that runs under the hood to this panel, which connects to your battery for the big power. And then right here, there are six different relays, six different fuses of various sizes, and they give you spares, as well as all the nuts and bolts. And uh, this is the fuse tap to run the power that lights up this, and it's automatic. So when it's bright outside, this is bright as you can see. At night, when everything's dim, this dims down so it's not blinding in your face. Works great. Uh, then you just run whatever switch you want to control which function. Say my backup lights, I want to be on this switch right here. Well, they're numbered uh, in here. There's a code in here somewhere that tells you. So I would say my backup lights are gonna be off of this circuit as this switch. I just connect the wire right there, run it to my backup lights. Now in the cab, when I push this button, all my big wiring is under the hood, away from everything, not a big mess of wires in the cab. It works really, really well. And then here, they give you these stickers that you put on what switch you want to run what. And you can like look right there and see there's options for pretty much whatever you want it to say. Okay, now on to the camera or the screen. This is the screen for the camera. You see it just, again, fits in the palm of your hand. A bigger one would obviously be easier to see, but again, I don't want clutter and stuff on my dash. Clean and simple. So. This is going to mount in there. Here's the camera unit itself that is going to mount down under here somewhere and watch this wheel lift. Maybe even on the wheel lift, I'm not sure. Um, it is a wireless camera to monitor. I've never used a wireless one before. I've always had wired cameras, so we'll see how it works. But again, I want this to be very just factory and clean. I don't want a whole bunch of extra wires and all that, even though it's got a whole bunch of extra going on but the less I can do the better so this is gonna mount in the dash this camera is gonna mount on the wheel lift this is the power for the monitor this is the power for the backup camera you can wire this into your reverse lights what I'm gonna do is wire it off one of these switches this will of course with some extension uh, go do whatever circuit I choose then plug to the camera so that when I hit, say, this one, this relay activates, powers up this circuit, turns on this camera, this lights up on the dash, and I can see what I'm doing. Then I can have the backup camera on the wheel lift watching under the car, whether I'm going forward, backward, whatever. The stock backup camera only works while you're in reverse. But if I'm going through dips or turns or whatever and wanna watch what this is doing under the car or the safety chains or anything like that, I want to be able to have this camera on or off at any time. So that is the plan. We got to fit all of this in here as clean and nice as possible. So that's our mission for today. Okay, just a quick update now that we're part way through the install. We've got the uh, relay box mounted up here and I'm going to show you this before all the other wires are running off of it and making it look kind of a mess. but. Uh, on this relay box, this here is the one wire that runs out of your cab to it. And then this is your one main power wire. See, so it comes up here to the battery. That powers the whole unit. And one thing I like about this one is you do not have to ground back to the relay box. On a lot of the other ones I've seen and some I've had in the past, you have to run, say, a backup lights on the back of the truck. You got to run a power wire all the way back to the backup lights and then the ground wire all the way back up and back into the relay box. On this one, you don't have to do that. Say this is my backup light circuit. I just hook one wire into here, run it all the way to the back of the truck and then off the light ground it right to the frame or the body and that's all it needs. So it cuts the amount of wires running through the truck in half. because I'm using this dual wire right here, which is basically this. This is a smaller version. This is actually the uh, power to that uh, camera monitor in there, but this is a bigger, heavier duty version of this. So since I'm using this dual wire, I can run one section of it from this relay box all the way to the back of the truck 
and run two functions off of that. So say I have a low mounted backup light and a high mounted backup light because I want one down low to look under the wheel lift. I can hook this into two separate circuits and just remember which is my red and which is my black. And then back at the other end of the truck when just this one is running through the whole truck, when I get to the back of the truck, I split them, put my red to say the down low backup lights and the black to my high back of the cab mounted flood light work lights. And then that one wire runs through the truck, runs both lights back there. So I mounted this uh, to the top of the fuse box because space in here gets crowded quick. And when you do that, you just got to make sure you route all your stuff so that the fuse box still opens and gets to everything you need. You see it clears right over the top of the battery, holds up just fine. You can still get all the fuses. Don't make the mistake I made when I installed one of these on another vehicle, not this brand, uh, some off brand many years ago where I drilled through this to then mount this to the fuse box because then you drill through your cheat sheet here on what fuses do what. So that wasn't good. So this time I used some 3M double sided tape. Should hold up just fine. If it doesn't, I will contact you minute to the top of that or something. But very simple setup. Now inside the truck, I have this switch pod right here that I will end up labeling with all the different gauges. Uh, there's my monitor that will run off of it. The wires run down right here and right through this kick panel. I did notch that out with a Dremel. This is just this little panel right here and it's easily replaceable for like 10 bucks off of eBay if I don't like that. So yeah, I notched through that, but it's okay. So the wires just run right there and then they were up under the dash through the firewall in a wiring hole that Dodge already has in here and to this. And that's just about as clean of an install as you can get which is what I want. So I'm going to get back to finishing up all the lights and camera and then uh, check back in with you after that. Okay, it is much later in the day and we're done with the whole install for now with the stuff that I have. I'm waiting on some more stuff to show up. Um, I didn't show you all the wiring and like a full on how to hook everything up thing because one thing I'm not good at, well, a lot of things I'm not good at. One of them that I'm really not good at is electrical. I hate it. I'm not that great at it, and if you want to learn how to do electrical stuff, there's about a million people out there on YouTube who are far better than me to watch. So, I skipped all that, and I just did the install. So, here's what I got the aux beam. There's the product number if you want it. Aux, aux power control, okay. Uh, but it's mounted right here, and as you can see, I have backup lights, camera and you see it just dimmed down is because this camera is blocking the light from the sunroof so if we back off it should brighten back up and then it dims back down as the light goes away so I have camera rack lights because there is a like a headache rack going in the truck that have lights up high on it for big flood lights off the back uh, that's what this one will run this auxiliary power one I thought they had a sticker for uh, strobe lights but they don't so what you do is you just take whatever sticker you want and put in whatever position you want for what feature that switch runs. And I thought they had one for strobe lights, but they don't. So that one's got like a little warning symbol on it. So I just did that. And if you notice, I didn't put any strobe lights on this truck. Uh, it's another thing that's not here yet is I ordered a kit that will tie into the wiring in the truck. And when I press this button, all of the factory lights on the truck, the headlights, marker lights, fog lights, uh, mirror lights in the back, the top cab lights, everything in the back, reverse lights will all strobe back and forth in whatever pattern you choose. So this truck will have strobe lights on it, but won't have any extra non-factory lights on it other than the backup lights. So keep with the clean and simple theme. So this here, we'll just turn on the camera. And there it is. I don't know how good it actually looks in the uh, looking at the camera through the camera, but in person you can see that pretty well. Um, but, uh, we'll have to go test it out on the junk car out back, but it's mounted to the wheel lift. You'll see when we get out here in just a minute. But 
Uh, one cool thing about this aux beam switch controller, so if I turn on my backup lights and, or say, forget all this, say I've got like a light bar and fog lights on and my back rack lights like I'm out on some dirt road and a car comes around the corner and I want to turn off my lights so I don't blind them, you can just hit this one button and everything turns off. And then once it's passed and you want all your lights back on, press this one button and the functions that you had on are the ones that turn back on. No matter what that combination was, it'll all turn off and then the ones that you had on when you turned it off are what turned back on. So it goes right back to how you had it. So let's turn the camera on and I'll go show you what I did in the back. So this is the part I'm not so sure about. Um, the camera is mounted right here, right on the wheel lift tube. That I am sure of. Uh, it looks right down the wheel lift. Perfect. So no matter how low the car is, it's going to have a view underneath it. And we'll go test that out on the little junk car I have up in the in the pasture up there. But the lights I mounted on the sides of the chain pocket facing out like that, not straight back because on my red tow truck I have a camera down low like this and I have a actually one of these same lights right next to the camera pointed straight back and at night that light is too bright and kind of blows out the camera and makes it hard to see what you're looking at in the camera. So I'm hoping these ones facing out to the side will not totally wash out the camera and make it hard to see and the other thing is they will light up your work area around the truck and since when you're doing the tow type of stuff you're working around this area a lot like out here putting straps on being lit up out here is really handy not just straight out the back but also help with backing up and around corners or anything like that so but what i'm not sure of is if that is going to throw enough light back here down the wheel lift or if I got to put another light right beside that camera. And if I do, I'll find a, a super dim low power one so I don't wash out that, that uh, camera. But under the hood, what makes this whole setup so nice is this is why I still got to zip tie all this up, clean that up. But this one wire has two wires in it. One of them goes back and feeds the backup lights. The other one goes back and feeds the camera. Normally this would be a positive and negative. And if we had to ground all the way back to this thing, like a lot of the other brands of these do, I would have to run two of these wires all the way to the back of the truck. But with this setup that's self grounding or you ground at the back and don't have to ground back to the unit, one wire runs all the way to the back of the truck, runs both lights and the camera on separate circuits because it has two inside so that's really handy um, this other wire that goes in with this one um, is the power for the monitor inside the truck so I didn't want separate switches to turn on the monitor plus turn on the camera you hit that one button and it powers the monitor and the camera itself at the same time and turns them both on and both off so then anything else we add on like when I do the back racks you just figure out what switch in there does what circuit add your wire in put your lights on hook up a ground to something metal and you're good to go so very good system makes wiring very simple even for someone like me who doesn't know how to wire so let's uh head up to the pasture and pick up a car all right so i was going to practice on that little car over there because it's super low and it'd be good to see if i can see underneath a low car with this which i'm sure i will but uh, it's blocked in with some construction materials so we're going to practice on the jeep instead so we will turn our camera on our camera loads and you can't see anything because when the wheel lift is folded up like this the camera is tucked up behind the buffer so as we lower it down out it comes and it doesn't, what throws me off a little bit, I'll have to get used to it, it doesn't look like the wheel lift is moving because the camera's moving with it, but if you watch the ground, it is. So we can extend our wheel lift out. And there's a good shot of it going out. We can open our arms. And now when we back under the Jeep here, we can see just how high we are off the ground, which is nice. We can see that we're clearing everything underneath. 
and I don't know it kind of looks not focused in uh, your screen right here but in real life it looks actually very clear so I think we can see we're right there on the ground backed into it we can see our arms close and up we go so this is going to work out really good because once I put it in drive to take off this will go away but if I want to watch what's happening underneath the vehicle I can leave this one on or turn it off and on at any time with this switch so that is really really going to be handy and uh, let's put this thing back down so we got our backup camera on there because I put it back in reverse so we lower this back down there we're on the ground we close our arms to let it go and then we can put it in drive pull out from under this thing bring it up you can see and oh it disappeared see that one disappears when you start driving forward i was going to show it coming in This one I can leave on, so that's going to be super, super handy. As I'm pulling away, I can still watch in this one when this one... Come on. Sooner or later. There. When it disappears and I'm making turns trying to get out of a parking lot, I can still watch what's happening under the car in this one. So, uh, I'm pretty happy with this whole setup. Uh, this sits kind of off to the side here, but it doesn't hit my knee when my I move with my knee. And keeping it off to the side a little kept this cubby open which is perfect because that's where the remote goes for the wheel lift this sits right here in this cubby hole but it doesn't block any access to anything i still got my charge port right here just fine uh, this doesn't block my well i guess you'd see from the side clear shot to the trailer brakes clear shot to the four wheel drive control so nothing is in the way and from where i sit i can't see any wires from over here you could probably see these ones running on the back right here. The passenger will see it, but I don't see it, so it doesn't bug me, and I don't really care if it bugs someone else. So I think this is going to work out really well. Um, I know this is going to be good because I've been running one for the last couple of years. Uh, that camera I can see just fine in. The screen is big enough, especially when I have this one here to kind of go off of both of them. So I'm pretty happy with this. There's some more things that are going to come to get added onto this here. I just have these blanked out pieces on these ones so it's not super bright but uh that's it for this video i told you i'd show you putting this thing in and the camera setup so there we go um that'll be it for this one and next time maybe we'll put some tracks on the jeep because that'll be fun all right see you next time